May I help you, please? I want to buy some gloves. A size six and a half? Certainly. Any particular shade in mind? Uh, yes, blue. Blue? Yes, of course. Here's a lovely shade, hand stitch. I was thinking of, well, more of a flame blue. Flame blue. Oh, I'm afraid. Oh, I do happen to have a pair. Six and a half? Yes. Here you are. What about these? Yes. Yes, that's the pair. Exactly what I want. Oh, don't wrap them. I'll wear them. Lovely for cocktails. Yes. That's what I'm going to use them for. <laughs> Mrs. Wingate? Yes, I'm Mrs. Wingate. Oh, won't you sit down, please, Miss Dane? I've always admired your singing so much. I've always been a fan of yours. Kathy Dane records are favorites with all my friends. Oh, I took the liberty of ordering martinis. Well, thank you, Mrs. Wingate. I don't go on here for another half hour. Oh, I didn't come to hear you sing this time, Miss Dane. I came to ask you a favor. Oh? I want you to sing at a party I'm giving next month at my Bel Air home. Well, I'm flattered, but I'm afraid I couldn't possibly accept any private engagements. Oh, uh, oh I wish you'd reconsider. It's such a special occasion for a very dear friend who's spoken of you. Oh, who? Jimmy Conway. Jimmy? Yes. He's my neighbor. You know, he's been through so much in the last year with Eloise's death and everything. I felt this party might... You, uh... You know Jimmy's wife? Yes, I've met Sarah. She's very nice. I'm glad. For Jimmy. I know I talk too much, but since I've met you, I can't help wondering why you and Jimmy... It's what? really quite simple, Mrs. Wingate. I'm a singer. I need backing. Jimmy couldn't help me then. He didn't have the money he inherited when his... Well, anyway, by the time I got my backing, what's her name... Sarah had come between us. I never met her, but... Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Did any get on you? No, no, but I'm afraid those beautiful gloves of yours are ruined. Oh, what a shame. Well, I hope it won't take the color out. Flame blue is my favorite. Mine, too, I guess. I had some gloves pretty much like those ones. Oh, really? I lost one of them. Oh, really? Well, I've ruined one here. Perhaps we can make a pair between us. Which one did you lose? Oh, I can tell by just looking at yours they'd be too small. I wear a seven and three quarters glove. Have to have them made to order. My piano teacher used to call me Ham Ham. Sorry, I'm not your girl. No, I'm afraid you're not. <laughs> No, she wasn't, Dutch. I'd played the scene well. Smart. Oh, you'd have been proud of me, Dutch. It wasn't easy. Because I was playing with my own life. My happiness. But I did it just the way you taught me. And I gave you the report just the way you taught me. All facts, no emotion. All right, Shadow, so it isn't Kathy Dane. But that glove fits somebody. Dutch, I hate it. I'm shaking from it. Oh, Jimmy will know I'm up to something. Look. Drop the whole thing. I, I'll give you 15000 I have in my checking account. I want more than that. Dutch, I won't let you break this up for me. Jimmy and I have too much. You mean you're going to try hanging on to him and his money, even if Eloise was murdered? Stop it! You... That make you feel better? I'm sorry. Okay. One down and two to go. A secretary and a grass widow. Who's first, Shadow? I'm so tired, Dutch. Sure, kid, sure. You need a good night's sleep. I'll drive you home. Oh, by the by, do you sleep good in that house? Very well. Just ask, Shadow. Just ask. You drove me home. I don't know what I was thinking to let you do it. When we got there, we spent an hour sitting in the car while you gave me all the details of her about Millicent Taylor again. She'd been Jimmy's secretary for four years. She'd been out of town at the time of Eloise's death. You wanted to know where. We said goodnight finally, and you drove off. Hey, 
evening, Sarah. <gasps> Since when have taxis been slipping up to the house without lights? Oh, Jimmy. Didn't you get my message? Oh, sure, darling. You wouldn't be home for dinner. Why are you so nervous? Who'd you have dinner with? Oh, uh, uh, Louise Gowans. You remember Louise. Uh, she just got in from Honolulu. Oh, how is Lou? Oh, fine. Fine, Jim. She asked about you. Well? What is it, darling? Don't you kiss your husband when you get home? Oh, of course. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Are you smoking a new brand of cigarettes or something? No, I... Well, your hair's full of a tobacco smell I seem to remember from somewhere. Oh, the cab driver was smoking a pipe. Oh, I remember now. That man you used to work for, he smoked an awful tobacco that I it's couldn't... It's just an old, cheap brand. So two people smoke it. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> I was too clever for him, the way you taught me to be clever. And the next day, Dutch, I used everything you taught me. I had to. Because on my way back from Hollywood, I noticed that a gray coupe had turned with me off the boulevard. I noticed it because it looked exactly like my old car that I sold when I got married. And when it turned with me again at sunset and followed me out to Laurel, I knew that it was tailing me. Oh, I used what you taught me so well, Dutch. I timed traffic lights, dodged up narrow streets, and got away from them. I would have taken his license number and looked him up, Dutch, but I had other things to do first. Things like playing sick, playing a scene for my husband's secretary. Come in. Oh, Millicent. Millicent, it was so sweet of you to come. Sit over here by the bed. Are you... Ill, Mrs. Conway? Oh, migraine headaches. Unbearable sometimes. Oh? Jane. Oh, but I never let Jimmy know about them. Sick wives are such a nuisance to a man. Yes, they certainly are. Uh, I called you, Millicent, because I've been planning a surprise for Jim's birthday. A costume party. And you want me to call her off? All right. What guests are coming oh, in? No, what? no, no. I don't want to call it off. Jimmy needs relaxation. I wondered if you'd uh, play hostess for me. Me? Hostess? Well, if this stupid headache persists, it... Oh, it'd be a great favor to me. And I know Jim would like it. Say you will, please. Well, really, Mrs. Conway, I... Oh, I... please, now. Well, I, I have a costume. I don't know what... Well, mine's in the closet. I got it from Hollywood Customers today. It would fit you. Which one? Uh, the colonial... Oh, the... oh, oh, yes. Yes. Well, it, it's lovely, Mrs. Conway. Oh, you'd look beautiful in it. I'd almost be afraid to let Jimmy see you wearing it. Would you? Now, the only thing it needs is some blue gloves. A flame blue, don't you think? Of course, they're rather difficult to well, find. Well, that's no problem. I think I know. Yes? Huh. You're clever, aren't you, Mrs. Conway? How do you mean? You aren't like Eloise. Migraine headache. She'd have called him away from work a couple of days to nurse her. She was that kind of wife. You're very fond of my husband, aren't you, Millicent? Yes. Yes, I am. Are you in love with him? Yes. Last winter it got so bad that I had to go to a sanitarium for a while. Oh, you poor dear. <laughs> Everyone thought I was spending the holidays with my sister. When I came back, a lot of things had happened... Eloise had committed suicide, and... And I was married to Jimmy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here. But aren't you going to take the costume with you? I've got a feeling you'll be up and around by party time. If there is a party. Oh, uh, just in case you want to check it. On New Year's Eve, I was in Riverview Sanitarium, Mrs. Conway. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.